All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, I'm gonna be doing a video on the Two Trees TS2. This is a 20 watt version that uh, Two Trees sent out for me to test. And I've been doing some testing with it. Uh, the, the Z axis took a little getting used to. I had a rhythm uh, using the other machines and with the automatic focus and the Z axis, it kinda messed up my, my rhythm for a little while. But now that I've gotten accustomed to it, I've figured out how it works, I've gotten comfortable with it, Everything's rolling pretty flawless with it. Haven't had any big errors, uh, but I do want to go over some of the things that you need to be aware of if you're, you know, going to go get this machine with the Z-axis. There are some things that you just need to be aware of in the operation so that you don't get discouraged with it or decide that it's a bad idea because it is actually really nice. It just takes a little getting used to. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around and we're going to get over to the enclosure and get to work. All right guys, so I'm gonna kind of hide over here behind the enclosure and I wanna explain this process to you. Uh, when I first got it, it, it kind of threw me. Uh, the way that this works, it will add a step or two to your processing in order to be successful without causing any issues. Uh, the one thing that I will tell you is when you're using the autofocus or using the Z axis, uh, when you autofocus it, you're going to want to make sure after you autofocus it that you rehome the machine. Uh, in doing so, what that does is that registers the machine back to where it actually is in the physical work area. Because I have found that if you set the focus and then you try to frame or you try to move, if, unless you set the focus here, let me, let me demonstrate so that this doesn't confuse anybody. With the machine sitting in the home position, I'm gonna home it. Okay, with it in the home position, if you move your material to where the laser is, uh, and then you're gonna go over to console, and don't, and don't worry guys, I'm gonna go over the settings in console here in just a second. And I'm gonna hit my engrave uh, focus macro in the console, and you'll see what happens. The machine goes down, the pin touches, it does the double touch off, and then it's focused. Okay, now if I have an engrave in the work area, the machine, I can frame it and there's not gonna be any problem because the machine never moved from home location. Okay, that you saw where that framed at and I don't wanna tear my machine up, but <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how this works. All right, so if, if you frame it, all right, it's right there. All right, I'm gonna set the focus, all right? So I'm going over, I'm hitting the same button I did from the home location, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the engrave focus button. It's gonna set the focus. Okay, now watch what happens when I frame this. Okay, so what happens is when you set the focus on the Z-axis, the machine's forgetting where it is in space. That's probably something that they can fix in a, in a firmware update or maybe, you know, some changes with the macro that they tell you to use. But that's exactly what's happening. When you hit the Z axis, the focus, it forgets where it's at. So as long as you always focus it at home, that won't be an issue. But let me show you the way that you work around this, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the machine. I'm going to move my Z axis which this is just cool as beans here. I'm gonna move the Z axis up so that it's way out of focus, all right? I'm gonna rehome the machine, guys. And I'm gonna put my wood in the middle of the workspace here. Uh, and we're gonna simulate that we're fixing to cut something out of this, but we wanna set the focus because you saw I just raised the uh, Z axis up so the machine is way out of focus. All right, so I'm gonna send the machine out in frame. All right, once it frames, and the machine stops, okay? If this on top of the material that you wanna focus it to, then there's one thing that you need to be conscious of. The pin that sticks down on the back of the uh, module here, you wanna make sure that that pin is gonna be the first thing that contacts the surface. If that pin's over a hole in your material, or if you don't have material under there and that pin can, can set down in the honeycomb, that's gonna cause you a problem because that is the limit switch. 
So you're gonna wanna make sure that there is some kind of material present under that pin before you press this button or else it's just gonna try to pick your machine up. So once I get it framed, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go over to my console and I'm going to hit the engrave focus button once again. All right, it's gonna go all the way down. The pin's gonna reference the material, come back up a couple times, and then it's gonna adjust the, the focus. Now the machine is focused for this material. But if I hit start now, guys, the machine's forgot where it's at. It's gonna go back to, I'm at zero, zero, and it's gonna go up here somewhere. The workaround that I have found is to rehome the machine without touching the Z. Don't, don't touch the Z axis in any way. Now you can send the burn out. You can, you can engrave, you can frame, you can do whatever. As long as you don't hit these autofocus buttons and cause it to forget where it's at. That's the workaround that I figured out. And since, since I've started focusing on the material, then home, then burn, no problems. It works great. I like it. I like the fact that you can set it for multiple heights. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate to you guys that maybe have never seen a machine with the Z axis before. I'm going to demonstrate to you how it works. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little cut in the uh, work area here, or a line rather, and I'm going to take this line. I'm going to set one layer to uh, run at zero on the Z. And then I'm going to duplicate that line. <coughs> I'm going to change it to another uh, power setting. I'm going to run the same power, which is going to be 100 and 100 on both of these, just to, just to show you guys what I'm doing. And on the Z offset, I'm going to set this one to minus 20. That way you can be sure to see it when the Z, when the Z off. Uh, axis moves. All right, so I'm just going to run this burn real quick. The first layer is going to be run at zero on the Z axis, which is focused. And then the next one is going to raise up to 20 and is going to run the next layer. Uh, if you're doing a multi layer or if you're needing to defocus or enhance focus on a material, this is where the Z axis is going to be a, a bit of a game changer for you. So here we go. Let me go ahead and start this. So you can see that's at normal focus. Now it's gonna raise, and I set it to 20, which apparently was too much. Uh, and then it's gonna run again. So note to self, 20 is not a good speed for this one. So let me, let me back that down a little bit. I, the, I've got so many machines in the shop, I forget which one does what. So we'll just change that to minus 10 for the next pass. And we'll run that again without activating the limit. So, what I'm gonna do with the machine sitting here, all right, I'm gonna hit my console button and I'm gonna tell it to engrave focus. So that's gonna bring it up, down, up until it makes contact, set the focus to engrave. After setting the focus, I'm gonna home. All right, once the machine homes, now I'm gonna run those two cuts. You're gonna have one at engrave focus and then the other one is gonna be 10 up from there. So here we go, let's run it one more time. It raises up, makes the next cut, and it's done. And it returns to my return to location. I'll turn the fan on here, guys. But as you can see, the machine's pretty accurate too. I'll run that one more time so you guys can see that it's hitting this, it's hitting the same line. So as far as accuracy with the two trees. It's, it's, so far it's showing me it's a pretty accurate machine. And you'll notice that the Z axis, after it completes that cut, it's, it's going back down to where it's supposed to be at the normal focus before it travels back. So I'm gonna run that one more just to show you guys. It's pretty accurate. All 
All right, so there you are. And that was about four passes, guys. Uh, and I went home, I homed it twice, and it went to my return to location twice, and that was four passes. Uh, and you can see that it's, now, that's a wide cut, guys. But why is that a wide cut? Because I did set one of my passes to come up 10 millimeters from focused. So that is not the actual curve of the machine. Uh, this is more the curve of the machine here. Uh, that was where I calibrated the camera. Once I got this in here, uh, did a little more playing around. Uh, had a little bit of an issue here with uh, me not setting the focus properly in my testing. So I have learned that you do not add three or four millimeters to it because the little foot will drag. So about two is about all you want to come down with the Z focus. But let's move over to the computer and go over some of the settings that you're going to need to know. All right, guys. So here we are uh, in Lightburn. And this is the machine. Uh, this is that this is a file that I was just cutting, uh, the remnants of a name tag. Uh, the settings that you're going to have to put in here once you get the machine configured, uh, you're going to have to go into console, and you're going to use these macros right here. Uh, there are scripts, per se, in here that you're going to want to need to know uh, and be able to set these up. Uh, this is the script for what I'm doing with the engraved focus. Uh, that tells it that the Z to zero right there so that's where i'm that's where i'm running mine is is at the z zero uh if you want to lift the z axis uh 20 millimeters i have one for that and it's g1 z20 so you can actually by putting g1 z whatever you can have presets for your z z axis and just set those up uh, like if I'm cutting two millimeter material or if I'm cutting and I want to drop down two millimeters or cutting two millimeter material, I can actually use this one here and this is going to drop the Z down to minus one, which is going to pull it a millimeter lower. Now, the one thing I will warn you about with this machine, that little pin sticks down a pretty good bit. So I would be careful going over about 1.5, especially if your material has any kind of warpage or anything like that to it, because if you go too low, and I learned this the hard way, that little pin that sticks down can grab the material and slide it around with the laser head. So 1.5 is as low as I would recommend going uh, with this setup. Any lower than that, it starts getting a little risky. But you can actually set these macros to do all kinds of uh, cool things. Here's one that I've set up for cut five millimeters which brings the Z focus down 2.5. But like I said, with that, you've got to be real careful that it's a nice flat piece of material or else there could be some uh, collision between that pin and the uh, work surface. So, but that's that's the macros that you got to put in there, guys. The book explains it, but I was kind of having a hard time following the book and following along with what it was showing me. Uh, the print's really small. And it's not all that ex explaining. I was able to look at it and figure out what I needed to do to make mine work. So I guess it it served the purpose. But to be able to set, you know, like preset focuses, that's the ones you're going to want to use. That is going to lift it 20 uh, millimeters every time you hit the button. So there you go. But as I said earlier, guys, I went ahead and changed this one because I do realize that this machine doesn't like going up 10 millimeters. So I went ahead and changed, or 20 millimeters. So I went ahead and changed this one to 10 uh, just to make sure I don't accidentally go too high with it. But but yeah, just changing that value after the Z uh, sets those uh, additional steps on the Z axis. So pretty simple. And once you learn how to work it, it's uh, it's actually quite helpful.